have that connection it brings a certain fire inside of you. It feels real. If that's not joy, I don't know what is. I've always been grateful for every opportunity. There's a lot of people that want to simplify their lives, but don't really know how to do that. There's a beauty to flexibility and a simplicity. Throughout the world, there are people who have created lives of deep meaning and happiness by connecting with nature and the processes of simplification. Come with me on a journey and let's find out how they've done it. I'm up here on beautiful Hell's Backbone Bridge. And in 1999, I came to this country for the first time and survived three days alone in the wilderness. After that, I was fortunate enough to find Hell's Backbone Grill, a beautiful little restaurant. Today, we're gonna to talk to Blake Spaulding, who's one of the owners and founders, about what it's like to run a restaurant in this beautiful Slick Rock country. I first went to Hell's Backbone Grill in 1999, and I've probably <laughs> eaten there 40 times since then. My gosh, thank you. And it is an amazing, amazing place you've created. Thank Can you. Can you tell me how it all came together? Well, uh, Jen and I were both um, Grand Canyon River cooks, and then, you know, we found out about this building. It was here and vacant and the people who owned the lodge were looking to have a restaurant inhabit that space again. And so I basically said, there's running water and electricity. I think we can totally pull it off. <laughs> so our formula was just to, from the beginning, or our vision was to only serve place-based food to the extent that we could. Mm -hmm. So we started gardens, and then in 2006, we started an actual farm. So we grow a considerable percentage of our own food. We source our beef and lamb from a local woman rancher, and we have about 150 chickens, and they lay eggs for the restaurant. And so, you know, we're always trying to figure out how to do more of our own sourcing from this place, with the idea being that, like, were you to go, let's say, eat in a country restaurant in Italy, they would never even consider serving you French jam or Spanish ham or New Zealand lamb. They're gonna serve you what they have because there's a huge pride in what they produce themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the time when we started the restaurant 15 years ago, it was well before the sort of farm to table boom. We were actually one of the first farm to table restaurants in the West. And then um, just knowing sort of the power of landscape combined with a good meal and sort of a welcoming, you know, warm, caring environment, I felt like um, we could really make people happy in mm -hmm. this context. And so our work is sort of to help people to have a transformational wilderness experience. So we feed them on their way in and we feed them on their way out. What's the story behind the name Hell's Backbone Grill? <laughs> Hell's Backbone is an extremely awesome kind of wild chasm that's up on Boulder Mountain. In the 1920s, the Army Civilian Corps, the CCC, uh -huh. came and actually built this really wild suspension bridge over the chasm. And uh, that created the first road in and out of Boulder. Prior to that, Boulder was essentially a land island, and the only way to get in or out was on horse or foot. And so they made the first bridge which made the first road in and out of Boulder. So it seemed like an apt metaphor. And that, that bridge way. is Hell's Backbone Bridge. Correct, So you just, yeah. yeah, picked up. Yeah. And then you just kind of gave it a little feminine touch with the logo. Yeah, it's kind of an <laughs> unlikely name for a restaurant. You know, we got to tone this an down. An organic farm restaurant <laughs> that is in, owned by two women. Um, yeah, so we put some flowers on it. <laughs> what are some of the things that you think this this whole area teaches? I think that it teaches a certain kind of self-reliance because there's not a lot of distraction. So who you are is kind of what you've got. So if you're a person who has a habit to be considerate and kind and look for ways to help others, then that's what you'll get known for. There's no way to hide from that. Everyone will know you for that. 
if you're a person who has a habit to be sort of greedy and wondering how you can get what you need and how to finesse the situation so that it serves you, that's who you are. It's very painful. Um, and so it's really like, almost like there's a spotlight on who you actually are. And so you have an opportunity then to step into that light and begin to refine away what you don't like and to enhance the qualities about yourself that you appreciate and that others appreciate. Or you flee, you know, with your tail between your legs back to the city where you can shop your way into a coma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> You've written, well actually you're in the middle of doing a second book. Your first yeah. book, A Measure of Grace, was actually pretty well received and had fairly wide distribution. Beautiful photography, but Thank what you. was your really what was your message there, and what's your, what's your upcoming message in your? With the measure of grace, the me the message was that in order to have uh, real sustainability, you have to start with relationships, and so it was very much a heart based book about the way that we kind of made it work to develop relationships here in Boulder and re relationships with the people and with the the food. The new book is called This Immeasurable Place, so it's kind of a companion book to With a Measure of Grace. This book is going to focus more on what it means to live and work and farm on the edge of wilderness, mm -hmm. if we can figure out how to say it. We're working on it. But, so you know, it's an one. interesting story because the wilderness shapes everything, and it is actually still very wild here. You know, we yes. have regular encounters with wild life and wild weather and you know the power goes out all the time and the water will go off and the phones hardly work and it's it's a simple life but trying to run a business in that um, in that in a in a system where the infrastructure isn't so you can't rely on it basically you have to learn how to rely on your wits and your instincts and your gut and that's kind of the direction the book is moving in. Being a veteran Grand Canyon river cook, what do you think experiences like rafting down the Grand Canyon teach people? Well, I think what it really does is bring them alive to their senses again, and it makes them be present. Because if you're really present, then what you're experiencing is you can hear the sounds around you, you you're taking in the, the sight of where you are. You know, you're not focused on one thing to the detriment or the exclusion of everything else. There's been some data that suggests that the average American spends 11 minutes a day out of doors, and that's true for children too. You know, they're plugged in in front of televisions and with their phones or with their Kindles or iPads or whatever it is. You know, and I think a lot is lost because the wilderness teaches you to rely on your guts, your wits, your intuition and to be alive mm -hmm. to your senses. And I think being in nature reminds you that you're in a human body standing on mm -hmm. a spinning planet in the <laughs> middle of a very, very big universe. I bet you there's a lot of people that thought doesn't ever even occur to them in their whole lives. And that's a loss because really what that reminds you of is sort of the vastness of time and space and it, it puts things, you know, not to be trite, but into a kind of context where it just doesn't really matter if your nose is right or you have some crow's feet or you don't have the newest car or your old dog smells funny. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. Like it's just, it's just like a big dream. No matter how wild you are, there's no place like home. And it's great to know that there's Hell's Backbone Grill and wonderful people like Blake Spaulding to meet you when you're done with the trail. Join us next episode when we speak with Robin Blankenship about what it's like to build a real homestead. Me Simple is building a website around the topics of simple living, finding gratitude, and connection with nature and the world around us. If you know of individuals, books, articles, or videos that address these topics, please share them with us today at mesimple.com.